Hello, sir. How are you doing today? Hey, pretty good. How about you? Good. All right. So uh, tell me a little bit about your life before Top Shot. Oh, it's a lot like my life now, just uh, just busier. <laughs> well, yeah. busier now, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I grew up at the camp out here. My parents founded this uh, place when I was uh, 13. And uh, so I always worked here. And then 18, started taking it over a little bit more of the day-to-day -day operations and stuff, especially as my mom went overseas to do some ministry and camp stuff there. And then, uh, yeah, just uh, j just do camps a full-time gig. So, yeah, that's pretty much the same, same thing as I do now. But now you add in all the gun stuff and, yeah, real busy. <laughs> so uh, what was your response to getting accepted to Top Shot? It must have been kind of exciting like no way <laughs> yeah it was kind of like that because i got on top shot as a dare a friend of mine uh, a guy who actually used to work here uh it had a it, it, i had known about the show and watched season one i'd even print out the application before it happened because i figured the best way to you know go play on a show like that is before everybody sees it and, 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 and knows about it because then everybody wants to be a part. I just watched it. I saw the drama. I was like, nah, I'm not interested. But a friend of mine texted me. He's like, dude, you, you should try out for season three. Because, you know, I, we don't have TV. He's watching it live. I don't even know he's on. I was like, that does sound fun. And, uh, you know, sent in my stuff and didn't expect anything about it. Uh, but, yeah, surprisingly made it. Even as I was flying out to it, though, I was like, I'm going to get eliminated the first day. But, hey, at least I get to go and play with somebody else's guns. That's what it was all about, just me getting to play with the guns and ammo. So never believed it. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. How was your experience like at Top Shot? Like, was it like, how, like, did it take a long time to do all the filming? Or was it like? Yep, that's that. my first response was actually pretty boring. Because uh, you're there for a good six weeks to film. It takes three days an episode, and like every tenth day is like a dead day, or a, just kind of a if we had to make up anything, which we didn't, because the weather was always good enough. And um, so, three you, you see all the whole episode condensed to forty two minutes, and so like day one would be a, a you know training or practice, and 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 then think the second day was the competition, and the third day is elimination, and. You know, it, that may have filled an hour each day. So the other hours, you're just sitting out in a house waiting to do nothing. So I, it was boring on that part. Yeah, yeah, we just, they just want to entertain so ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So how did you deal with the other contestants? Was it as bad as Top Shot made it seem? Or was it just like, they kind of like... <laughs> well, they, they usually get asked, is Jake, was Jake as bad as he seemed? So I was making... <laughs> it's like, no, no, he, he was a lot worse. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the stuff they couldn't air because, uh, yeah, FCC regulations, I guess. So the drama was there, and that was real, and that's just part of... I wanted my season to be the most drama-free season. Others had other motives, and there you go. How did your life change after Top Shot? I think... Or that may be a repeat question. Well, we kind of touched on... Oh, I touched on it earlier because now it's just like... Uh, it threw me into the firearms industry. Whereas before, I just, you know, had a few guns and this was my hobby. And now I... I, I people send me guns. And it's a it's a part-time job to review these and all this stuff. And so uh, it, it keeps me busy. And we, it added on a new program to camp at the Marksmanship Camp Program. And then summer camps and taking care of the place is still my day job. So there we go. Did you ever have a mentor that helped you get your shooting skills really good? Because, I mean, you're amazing. So no, not a, all self-taught. Yeah, all self-taught. I took one class once, and uh, that helped me solidify a lot of uh, uh, the pistol skills. And, and, you know, but everything else was just self-taught, even, even reloading, you know, kind of the trial and error of teaching yourself how to reload. It was like... Hey, why is my barrel bulging now? Oh, it matters that bullet grains and loads make a difference. Because I found my dad. It's literally falling off. What was your favorite um, shooting moment from Top Shot? Well, I 
loved shooting the 50 because never got to shoot one before then. Uh, that was two things I wanted to do on Top Shot. Shoot a machine gun and shoot a 50. And didn't get to shoot a machine gun, but got to 50. Uh, so that was one of my favorites. And then, uh, but the one everybody still talks about is the golf ball shot. And so, uh, you know, so that's a close second. But, you know, 50 cal. You can't beat that. Yeah. Have you shot a machine gun since then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I've had my fill. You know, I'll be at a range day and there. It's magged up and I'm like... Okay, <laughs> it, 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 it's a very expensive experience. Yeah, it is. a lot of ammo and stuff. So, yeah. have you, would you say you've gotten better since then, or if it, has it gotten, or kind of leveled out, or? You mean like shooting skill? Yeah, yeah. shooting skills. I imagine you always get better at something that you keep going at, and shooting is a perishable skill. And so, if you don't, you know, keep doing it and keep training and paying attention. And plus, I have more to work with, and yeah. uh, there's better tools out there all the time to just help you stay better and get better and new techniques. And so, hey, we all grow in everything if we keep at it. Do you still do any shooting, or is like, do you still like do any competitive shooting? I should say. Competitive shooting has fallen away. I, I did. I, I jumped into three gun a little bit after 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 Top Shot when I had you know, a sponsor or two uh, for like five eleven sent me to a few matches and stuff. And then that's like a rich man's hobby because if yeah. you don't have a sponsor, I mean, to go to these big matches, it's like three hundred fifty dollars entry fee. Yeah, then your travel expenses and then the ammo expenses and all that stuff is like you got to place in the top ten just to get a prize that breaks even. So I look at it as training now. And so yeah. if, if a competition is available and, you know, I'm available and not doing a marksman camp or all that stuff, I, I'm, I'm open to it just to keep my skills up because it's kind of like a, a, a pop quiz or test. You know, you can train and do all you want on your range, but until somebody else sets up this stage and match and you go into it blind, which competition, I wish they did it more like Top Shot because, uh, you know, three gun match, everybody goes through it, air guns and gets a game plan out. And I'm like, we get to practice? It's like, we didn't get to practice on Top Shot. You know, real deal, you bring them in to it. And some of the precision rifle matches are like this. I've never done it, but I've just heard. And that's 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 more the style that I was used to. It's like, we're just going to blindfold you and then give you a gun and say, shoot the targets. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Yeah. What is his way? Uh, his way is uh, Camp His Way. is God's way. And so that was, that was my mom's name for the camp, you know, back when we started. But uh, it, it keeps us focused. You know, it, it's always like, this isn't our camp. It's God's camp. And it's and we're going to try to do it by his way. So there we go. Cool. So um, how did you get into the children's ministry? You touched on that subject a little earlier. But like, what did like, how like, did your parents really like set up the camp or, and you just took over? Or were you like a big part of it at a young age? Yeah, 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 pretty much got it. I just grew into it. Uh, my mom was always a children's, uh, uh, you know, children's church pastor or whatever until we started the camp. And that came, you know, starting the camp came out of the need of just no good and affordable camps in this area of Texas. Uh, so we were about an hour and a half south around the Orange Beaumont area. And uh, God said, build it. And we found a place and by faith, you know, have this place now. Because it started with nothing and then just slowly grew. And so, uh, you know, working with kids, and I'm kind of like a kid at heart myself. It kind of matches. And uh, like I, I, all the time people ask me to do an adult camp. We did one. And it was all right. But, you know, it, it, adult camps. Fun fun. Kids. Yeah, it's a lot more fun with kids. And so I just I stick with that. After seeing Top Shot, we can see that you really love your family. How long have you been married? And how many children do you have? All right, so... I, you know, I saw this question. I was like, "How long have I been married?" <laughs> yeah, it's my wife. It's around. It's almost fifteen years. And so, yeah. the fun part is when I introduce myself. And you know, I got got five kids, and been married fifteen years. And I have a twenty year old, and a fifteen year old, and a uh, eleven year old, and a seven year old, and five year old. And so, people do the math after that. But <laughs> we, we, we've uh, foster and adoptive ministry stuff as as part of that. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we don't, we're not fostering anymore because with the adopted ones, we, we got a full house. But, yeah. yeah. Same way with us. We, we've adopted two littles, and they're just such a blessing in our lives. Oh, cool. So, it um, <laughs> a little different dynamic, but, yeah. you know. 
How long were you away from your family during the filming of Top Shot? That was tough, because you're away for six weeks, and you're on complete lockdown. Uh, they don't want you focused on, you know, what's going on at home and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. that was hard, because, you know, no internet, no phone calls, no mail, you know, no no news. Uh, you know, they took, took away my watch and pocket knife and flashlight, and they wouldn't let you have anything. And so they, they just want you there focusing on the show. And that was kind of rough. We'd actually smuggle notes out. When someone gets eliminated, it was like, here, call my wife and tell her I'm doing good and I love her. <laughs> you know? And that was the only thing Brittany heard from me. Yeah. Wow, that's total lockdown. I didn't know they actually did that. I, I thought they just, like, let you have, like, huh. basic internet and stuff like that. But. Not a chance. And, and, and it's, it's a, most reality shows do that. And so it comes from, like, in Survivor, they have a bigger budget and a bigger show. And I heard that. So on Top Shot, when we got eliminated, they, they went ahead and sent us home. But on Survivor, I heard they still sequester you the entire time. Because, oh you, know, you know, if people found out, oh, you were gone for filming. And then they're like, you were only gone four days. <laughs> you know, they kind of figure it out. <laughs> Due to the current climate of gun control, how has that affected your following on YouTube and social media? Hmm, well, you know, the thing is, okay, back in the day, you know, like, when Top Shot was airing and stuff, and not really because Top Shot was airing, but before, fa when, when the Facebook news were more organic, you know, I remember, I'd post any picture, and I'd only have, like, 50,000 likes, uh, like, on, it, on, the ch on the page, and I'd get, like, over a thousand likes for, in, for in impressions for every everything you post. Facebook and everything is just ghost blocking you now. And so they don't, they don't, they don't say it, but they do. And so, and if it's anything firearms related, and like every video of mine posted on YouTube gets instantly limited on monetization and stuff, just within three or four minutes of its upload. You know, you can watch it as soon as you upload. It's got the green money sign, and then three or four minutes right after you refresh. Oh, sorry, limited. No, you can't do that. And that's, uh, that's everyone. Cool. No, it's not at all. But and, and so that's that's the hard part is just you're you're fighting the tech industry to just allow you to you know do something perfectly legal. They don't like it. Yeah, I mean, like YouTube. I I I wonder how some of the bigger gun channels are actually getting their money still because it's the same thing you do as well. So it's, it's the same. I mean, it's hit or miss. Yeah. And you know it, it'll be completely random because like I, I I've had some videos monetized where I am actually promoting a gun part like a review or something you know and, and it's monetized and then I come up with something where I'm I'm just shooting archery or something no demonetized like there's there's no rhyme or reason to it and so it's random I don't know. So, oh, if your channel were to refilm Top Shot, would it be accepted the same way, or would there be a different response now with all these gun control things coming out? Um, it totally depends on the climate, and that may be one reason that they're not even doing it. In fact, season five was when they did kind of do All Stars, and it was po postponed because Sandy Hook happened, and so the actual airing was postponed, and you know the winter feel. He was really uh, nervous for a little bit because if it doesn't film, you don't get your money. You know, they're not going to pay you if they didn't air the show, and so uh, so it already has been affected by by that stuff. So you know, it's it, yeah, it, until, yeah, it, 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 and until people come to their senses and like, oh, well, guns really aren't bad. It's just people do stupid things with anything. Yeah. yeah cool. it's not gonna matter. What is something new that you're going to release on your YouTube channel, or is that classified news? Well, I actually released a video this morning, uh, and, and so it, it was a really fun one. with Double-barreled 12-gauge pistol shotguns. That sounds cool. They're muzzle loaders. So, so it, it's, it, anyone can just buy them. Like, they ship to your door because they're muzzle loaders. But, you know, 12-gauge, so a lot of options, and that was really cool. So that one's brand new. Uh, something that, I mean, it's not that classified because if you're, if you're really watching my YouTube comment, I mean, uh, Facebook comments, you would have seen it. Some dude's like, I want Top Shot Tree Service Firewood. I'm like, okay, can I split oak wood, like firewood, with a 50 BMG? 
You know, if I cut sections on side, will this? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna do that soon. <laughs> nobody cool. steal my idea, though. It's gonna take me a few weeks to get to it, but nobody steal that. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you for your time, sir. I had a wonderful time talking to you today, and I hope your YouTube channel keeps on growing and getting better. And hopefully, they stop demonetizing you. So. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks for having me.